Let us come to Psalm 34, 39. Psalm 39, what are you doing from verse 4? Psalm 39, reading from verse 4. Lord, make me to know mine age. Oh Lord, don't pass me through the experience of Nebuchadnezzar. Just teach me. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to listen. Show me your word. Show me the chapter and the verse. I'll believe it. I'll accept it. I'll meditate on it. And I will live by it. I don't want to go through Nebuchadnezzar's experience before I learn what I need to learn. Make me to know my age and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, that was made my days as an hand bread, and my age is as nothing. Thank you, Lord, for teaching me that my age, my stature, my ability, my skill, my possession is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. There's nothing to be proud of. Every man at his best state is lighter than vanity altogether. Vanity, verse 11, when thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, like a deed for Nebuchadnezzar, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Psalm 144, Psalm 144, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 144, we're looking at verses 3 and 4. Lord, what is man? That thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man, that thou makest account of him. Man is like to vanity. You see all these men of God, they learned the lesson. That's why they were humble in the sight of God. That's what, whatever their accomplishment, they knew it was nothing. Whatever their possession, they knew that was nothing. Whatever their brain, whatever their skill, whatever their experience, they knew other people have come before them. As much as they were, as skillful as they were, as effective as they were, as rich as they were. But then he said, where is the man now? The man is gone. Does the dust return unto dust? And now we see that the worms of the earth are feeding on them. Even though those men were great, that's what we thought at their own time. But it says, because of that, that's why we're humble. That's why we're lowly. That's why we know there is nothing to be proud of. That's why it says over here in verse 4, man is like to vanity. It's days as a shadow that passes away. And we're looking at Psalm 62, verse 9. Psalm 62, we're reading from verse 9. 62, verse 9. It says, surely, men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Altogether, they are lighter than vanity. And that's what Nebuchadnezzar eventually learned, and that's what we're learning. And I pray you'll learn it, you'll never forget it in Jesus' name. As a lighter than vanity. And that's what Nebuchadnezzar eventually learned, and that's what we're learning. And I pray you'll learn it, you'll never forget it in Jesus' name. As you may place as many zeros as you like together. And they all make nothing. Zero plus zero times zero minus zero plus zero. Uh, up to whatever power, everything is still zero. And that's what men are. It says they are vanity. It says they are nothing. And then if you put everything together without God, without the grace of God, without the revelation of God, without the knowledge of God, and without the help of God, all is vanity, and they all make nothing. So you may add up as many men with all their supposed force and wisdom as you please, and they are all nothing in comparison with God. Each man in himself is less than nothing and vanity. A worm is nothing compared to an eagle. And then we know that a lion or an elephant, an animal, is nothing compared to a man. Continue the comparison. A man is nothing compared to the Almighty God. What a shadow to the substance. What's a candle to the sun. 
What is a drop of water to the ocean? What is a grain of sand to the globe of earth? What is a finite being, however exalted, to the infinite? What is man, a worm, a speck of dust, a clod of, of clay, to the eternal one? What is created? What is a created dependent being to the uncreated independent Lord of the whole universe? We are all as nothing without God. We are nothing in ourselves. Look at the testimony of Scripture. We're looking at Job chapter 7, verse 17. Job chapter 7. We're looking at verse 17. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? That question is uh, uh, related to God himself. Oh God, what is man that you even think about man? And what is man that you are setting your heart on him? But the question is now thrown to you. Sometimes you are thinking about a man. And because of thinking about that man, he's so big in your sight, bigger than your God. And you think, if that man doesn't help me, where will I get any help? And you put your heart on a man. And the word of God is asking you now, what is man? That thou shouldest magnify him. You magnify the skills of people, the ability of people, the importance of people, the skills that people have. And you magnify the experience that people have. And you think I'll never be able to make it in life if this man does not support me. And the Lord is saying, what is man that thou shouldest magnify him? And that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him. You remove your heart away from God and you're thinking about the man. Only this man, only this man. If he does not support me, I'm lost. Eh? You're totally lost because you don't have God. Eh, when you think of the nothingness of man, all that will not be important to you anymore. Now you're about yourself, you're about yourself. Sometimes you feel big and you feel so great that it brings pride, in your, pride into your heart. And you need to know that you are nothing, you are vanity in the sight of the Almighty God. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Romans chapter 12, we're looking at verse 3, for I say, Through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Don't be like a Nebuchadnezzar. Thinking that you are the all in all. Thinking that you are the king of the whole universe. Thinking that this uh, surrounding here, this vicinity here, this community here, I control everything. Hey, somebody was there before you came. And those people, maybe they are no more there now. Where are they? The world is still going on. And the world is still moving on. And uh, the air is not lessened. And the sun, the rays of the sun is not lessened because so and so is gone. And because so and so is dead. Don't think too much of yourself. Don't get into that same seat or platform of Nebuchadnezzar. Don't allow the Almighty God to deal with you until then he reduces you to nothing. And then you say, and I so and so now praise and extol the most high God. And now I know all inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing in the sight of God. It says over here, for I say... Through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, everyone in the church. Because he's writing to the church, the believers. And he says, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. We're looking at Galatians chapter 6, verse 3. Galatians chapter 6, we're reading from verse 3. Here's what the Lord is saying. For if a man think himself to be something... When he is nothing, he deceives himself. He says, you'll not, you'll not deceive God. If a man thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, that will not deceive God. You will not be able to deceive any of the angels of God. You will not be able to deceive the saints of God, the people of God. You will not be able to deceive those who know their Bible. Those who know that all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing before him. You know, sometimes there are times you're talking to somebody and you say, Why did you do that to me without me? You almost will not be able to breathe because I'm the all in all. And that fellow will feel so small and feel well. 
I'm lost, I'm undone. This man, if this man does not continue to give me the help that she wanted to give me, then what am I going to do? It's because you don't believe in God. If you believe in God, you understand that man is another Nebuchadnezzar. And then God will preserve your life even without him in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes you want to make restitution. And then maybe you are wrongly married and you say you are packing your load and say, I'm leaving. I want to go to heaven because it's a wrong marriage. And then the man will say, ah, you will suffer in life. You want to make restitution? Okay, pack your load and go. You will come and kneel down here and beg because I'm the only one on earth. I'm your God. If you pack out of this place, you say you are making restitution, you will suffer. Once I am not in your life, there is nothing good that will ever come. That Pharaoh will realize Nebuchadnezzar later that God is greater than man. I said, God is greater than man. Don't allow any man to intimidate you. And they say, we'll give you this, we'll offer you this, we'll provide this for you. If you will bend down on us and make us your God, they are thinking they are so great, but show them how small they are. You'll keep alive even without them in Jesus' name. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. I'm looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'm going to read the second part of verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the second part of verse 6. That she might learn in us not to think of men above that which is reaching. That you will learn, learn it. Don't exalt any man, however rich, however mighty, however experienced, whatever they promise, whatever possession, prosperity they have, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is reaching. That's why it says in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 22. Isaiah chapter 2. What do you mean from verse 22? It says, cease from man. Cease ye from man. Remove your mind from that man. Remove your mind from that woman. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils. For wherein is seed to be accounted of when God deals with him. Look up here, brothers and sisters. You remember Nebuchadnezzar, the king, king of kings? That's what he thought about himself. And is the, is the protector of all and the provider for all. And he thought, I am king and nobody else. If I am not here, Babylon will not remain. Look at this great Babylon that are built by the might of my power. Listen to this. Those seven years that Nebuchadnezzar was not on the throne, did everybody die? Did hunger kill them? Were they protected? Yes, God was still on the throne. Nebuchadnezzar was not there. For all those seven years, he was in the forest. And the dew of heaven coming upon him. And then eating grass like oxen, like animal. And yet the people were still alive. Don't let any man tell you. They are all in all. They are there. Nobody else there. If they are not there, nothing will move on. If God is still on the throne and God is still on the throne, everything will keep on moving on. I said everything will keep on moving on. Cease ye from man. And don't put all your trust, all your confidence on man. In fact, we are told in Psalm 104. Psalm 104. I'm reading from verse 29. Psalm 104. I'm reading from verse 29. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die. And return to their dust. That's how sweet it is. And as a quick it comes, thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Verse 31, the glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. And then in verse 32, he looketh on the earth and he trembleth, and he touches the hills and the smoke. 
I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. And then it says, I will be glad in the Lord. We're looking at Psalm 146. Psalm 146. I'm reading verses 3 and 4. Psalm 146, verses 3 and 4. Put not your trust in princes. They are there today, they are not there tomorrow. If you're going to reach the place God wants to, you to reach, put your confidence in God. And put your faith in God. It's God that is living forever. Men do not live forever. Men will disappoint, but the disappointment is nothing. But God, who is the all in all, who lives forever, if he is your father, you'll get to where you will get to. Give me a good amen. amen. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no hell. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, and in the very, in that very day his thoughts perish. In that very day his thoughts perish. You know, there's times that people will they, they, they kind of tease you. They taunt you, they torture you, and they torture you with promises. I will do this for you, I will do this for you, I will do this for you. They never do anything, and then you shift all your focus away from God, and all the other people around who are willing to help, you even you abandon them, and you don't want to look at anybody. This every time the person sees you, have a great vision. I'm, I'm thinking of something great, great, great and mighty. I'm thinking about I'm going to do for you. Every time they see you, they lift up your face and they lift up your, uh, lift up your confidence in them and your trust in them. And you even forget to pray. You don't pray anymore because, you know, brother so-and-so, Mr. So-and-so promised me that that thing I'm looking I should just rest and relax. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Everything is my hand. You'll see what I'm going to do. And eventually it says... You, you take it, their breath goes forth, he returns it to his side. In that very day, his thoughts, his promises, and his vision, and all those things he said, everything perishes and they are buried with him. Why don't you put your faith in God who is alive? Why are you putting your faith, your trust, your confidence in a man? We don't know whether the man will still be there tomorrow. Put your trust in God. And his thoughts and his ways and his vision and what he has for you will remain because God, this God, is an everlasting God. He will never die. I said he will never die. But man will die. That's why only in him and through him do we have any value recognized by heaven, saved and favored and surrounded by omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God. He made something Valuable out of our nothingness as he created the vast worlds out of nothing. Now we come to point number three the invincibility of God. The invincibility of God. You cannot conquer him, you cannot change him, you cannot hinder him, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, limit him. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4, verse 35. Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? What a revelation of Nebuchadnezzar had of the true God. As we look at everything that Nebuchadnezzar said in this chapter, after he came out of his humiliating experience of insanity, and we look at everything he saw and everything he learned through the schoolmaster of suffering and humiliation. Let us summarize them. Number one, he said, the most high liveth forever. The most high liveth forever. If you could learn that in the day of prosperity, in the night of adversity, in the night when persecutors are pursuing you and they are bragging they are going to destroy you. If you can just learn this one single lesson, the most high liveth 
forever. And then number two, he also learns that his dominion is an everlasting dominion. That nobody can get out of that dominion. That you say, I don't want to be under the control of the almighty God. Everything is controlled by him. Number three, he doeth according to his, his will in the army of heaven. He doeth according to his will. Angel Gabriel cannot say, God, no, that will not happen. And the angels cannot form a committee together, an ad hoc committee, and say, Gabriel, Michael, and all the other angels come on here. We're, in, we're so many, we're innumerable, and we're going to resist this one. No, they cannot do that. And even Satan cannot stand in the way and say, God, I don't permit this. I don't allow this because we're told Nebuchadnezzar learns the lesson. He do it according to his will in the army of heaven. Number four, and among the inhabitants of the earth. Among the inhabitants of the earth. No matter the economy of this world, what God wants to do, he will do. And no matter if all people forsake you, and if all people say, we don't like him, we hate him, we don't want him. If you're a child of God, and you're standing upon the promises of God, I'm telling you, every place you need to get to, you will get there. And the promises the Lord has made to you, those promises, are yes and amen, and they're going to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And you know, sometimes you're making progress and you're moving from this level to this level to that level. And it's according to the promise of God, according to the covenant you have, that the Lord has with you. And then some people will say, look at this man. And look at this woman. Look at this lady. It's just moving on and on. Now, if we don't stop him, he will become greater than our children. He will become greater than our village people. And even if they all come together and they say they are going to stop you, can we stop God? God is unconquerable. And God is unstoppable. And the Lord has said he will do his will. And that will he wants to do and accomplish in your life, he will do and accomplish it in Jesus' name. Number five, Nebuchadnezzar learns, and we're learning today that none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Nobody can make a God afraid. Not even Satan, not even the demons, and not even the angels, and not any man. And if you're a child of this King of Kings, or a child of this Lord of Lords, I'm telling you, you take every fear, every timidity out of your heart because nobody can stop your God. Number six, he is the king of heaven. Number seven, all his works are truth and all his judgments, all his ways, judgment. And then Nebuchadnezzar said, and those that walk in pride is able to, to do what? To abase. Our God is great. And this God is your God. If you are born again, he is your father. If you are born again, he is your protector. If you are born again, he is your provider.